Alright, thanks for watching. And today I want to derive the celebrated D'Alembert's formula for the solution of the wave equation, which is simply the wave equation but with certain initial conditions. Namely, assume you have a wave which initial position phi, so initially you assume the wave has some form phi of x, and moreover, the initial velocity is psi of x. So assume at every point, we sort of uh, throw the wave at uh, you know, speed psi of x. And the cool thing is we can have a very explicit formula and very elegant formula for the solution for this. But first of all, remember how we solved it last time, so we just uh, wrote the second order TPDE in terms of two first order PDEs and we solved it and we eventually got something like that u of xt it's capital F of x minus ct plus capital G of x plus ct maybe I had the signs mixed up but it's still a correct solution because F and G are arbitrary and now all we really need to plug in uh, to do is just plug in the initial conditions and everything and then we get our solution. So if you plug in t equals zero, you get ux zero, that's f of x minus c zero plus g of x plus c zero and that's f of x plus g of x but we know the initial condition is phi of x. So u x zero is phi of x. So here we already have our first equation. F plus g is phi. And then all we need to do is to differentiate this with respect to t and plug in t equals zero. So u t x t, that's f of x minus c t with respect to t plus g of x minus ct with respect to t which becomes f again use the chain loop uh, f prime of x minus ct times minus c plus so I did, oh I forgot here plus c okay uh, plus uh, g prime of x plus ct times c, so you differentiate g and then uh, you uh, differentiate that with respect to t and then essentially what we get is if you plug in t equals zero, u t x zero becomes minus c f prime of x minus c zero plus c g prime of x plus c zero and that becomes minus c f prime of x plus c g prime of x and we know that this is by definition u t x zero which is psi of x and then if you want one thing we can do we can divide this equation by c and we get g prime of x minus f prime of x equals psi of x over c which is a second equation but notice this equation involves uh, just f plus f and g and this equation involves derivatives well to get f and g back let's just integrate so what we could do for instance is to take this equation and essentially integrate from 0 to x and integrate from 0 to x and I get dx etc etc again technically with respect to s so maybe let me make this rigorous integral of g prime of s minus f prime of s ds is psi of s ds of this and then using the FTC we get G of X minus F of X minus G of zero minus F of zero equals one over C, C integral from zero to X psi of S ds. Let's call this A. 
So what we get is that g of x minus f of x equals 1 over c integral from 0 to x psi of s ds plus a. On the other hand, we have the other equation that just says, in some sense, f plus g, so g plus f, equals phi. So all we need to do is just solve for f and g, and then plug it into our solution, and then we would be done. Um, and well, if you want, if you want to impress me, you can use some linear algebra, see if you followed all my videos. But here it turns out, you, you don't even have to, the equations are easy enough that you can just add them and subtract them. Therefore, if you add the equations, what do you get? Well, if you add that, you get g of x plus g of x, so 2g of x, plus f of x minus f of x, which is 0, and that's phi of x plus 1 over c, integral from 0 to x, psi of s ds, plus a. So in other words, g of x, that becomes phi of x over 2, 1 over c over 2, so 1 over 2c, and a over 2. And similarly for f, so subtract this from this, so this minus this, which is 0, f of x minus minus f of x, which is 2 f of x, equals phi of x minus 1 over c, integral from 0 to x, psi of s ds, and then minus a. And again, if you want, divide everything by 2, and you get phi of x over 2, minus 1 over 2c, minus a over 2. And lastly, for reasons that will become apparent in a second, you have this minus times this integral. Well, let's just turn it into a plus, but with the order reversed. So that is phi of x over 2 plus 1 over 2c, integral from x to 0, psi of s ds, minus a over 2. Which is great. We solve for f, we solve for g, and then all we need to do is plug in our formula for u. Remember u was f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct. f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct. And again, by the way, <laughs> I, mean, I know the answer, that's why it doesn't surprise me, but look, technically we have this a over 2, and we still haven't determined that, right? So that might be a problem, and think of this as being a criminal or something. We should be scared of that person, but we will see in a second. So what is f of x minus ct? In every instance of x here, you replace it by x minus ct. So phi of x minus ct over 2 plus 1 over 2c, x minus ct to 0, psi of s ds, minus a over 2, plus, now g, which is phi of x plus ct over 2, plus 1 over 2c, integral from 0 to x plus ct, psi of s ds, and plus a over 2. Whew. So if you add them, the weird constants get cancelled out. And not only that, you actually have a nice simplification. Because uh, what do you get? First of all, you have a 1 half. Again, that is our u of xt. It's 1 half of this phi term, phi of x minus ct plus phi of x plus ct and 1 over 2c and those things so integral of x minus ct 0 plus integral of 0 x plus ct 
psi of s ds. Okay, no more constants. And last but not least, we have this nice thing, the zeros, they kind of match. So you can write this as one integral, and we get mu of xt. It's one half phi of x minus ct plus phi of x plus ct plus 1 over 2c integral of x minus ct to x plus ct psi of sds. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the famous d'Alembert's formula which gives you an explicit solution of the wave equation with initial condition. So phi and if the initial position is phi and the initial velocity is psi, this gives us an explicit solution. And Last but not least, what does it mean physically? So suppose, let's say, again, for simplicity, the initial condition looks like that, phi, okay? Or no, sorry, maybe even better. So suppose it's this triangle, phi. And assume for, for a second that the velocity is zero, that psi is zero, then the solution is one half of x minus ct plus x plus ct. What is this x minus ct? It's phi, but it travels to the right. Phi of x plus ct is phi, but it travels to the left. So what this means, after a certain while, this pyramid phi splits up into two parts of like half the height, because you have this half, and one part basically goes to the right at speed c, and the other part goes to the left at speed c. Which is, again, sort of how a wave should work, right? If you have some string that looks like that, and you just unpluck it, after a while this, the spring should just ripple, and just one part goes to the right, the other one to the left. And this is just a contribution to the velocity, and this velocity, you know what happens is this interval x plus ct and x minus ct just becomes bigger and bigger. So sort of the bigger the time is, the bigger the influence of this velocity. Right. There we go, that's that. And again, this is one of the amazing PDE that has you know, a very simple and elegant solution. All right, if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.